I've got seven o'clock, so I think we'll uh, officially get this meeting started. And before we call the meeting to order and welcome everyone to our second Zoom council meeting, I just wanted to make a comment. Uh, had the opportunity to see some some other meetings conducted by Zoom, and um, I realized how fortunate uh, we are to have the kind of cooperation to make this work. Uh, because uh, So I want to thank all of you for uh, being flexible and uh, finding ways to make this work. Uh, I have seen some situations where it hasn't worked so well. So uh, again, I want to thank you and thank staff for getting this organized for us so that we can still conduct our meetings and uh, stay apart under these circumstances. And also before we get down to the business of our meeting today, I just thought in the respect to the uh, victims in uh, Nova Scotia, uh, perhaps we could uh, observe a minute of uh, silence. So if you'll please join me for a minute of silence, we'll uh, get back to our meeting after that. Thank you. Okay, thank you everyone. Uh, just as a housekeeping item before we get rolling as well, uh, for those of you uh, joining us uh, via Zoom, uh, just be aware that we are not using the chat feature that Zoom has. We'll just be conducting the meeting through the normal uh, approach to things. Uh, sorry, I've got a printer running in my background that I didn't control, so you may be getting some noise from that. I'll just shut that off. Sorry about that. So let's first deal with the debt agenda. A motion here uh, moved by Dan, seconded by Lisa, that the agenda of the April 20th, 2020 regular meeting of council be accepted and passed. Any discussion on the agenda? Nope. All those in favor? That's carried, thank you. Uh, any disclosure of pecuniary interest? I don't have any, uh, Dan? No. Lisa? No. Uh, Steve? None. And Sherry? No. Okay, thank you. Uh, next up is the adoption of the minutes of the council uh, meeting from April 6th. So I have a motion here moved by Sherry, seconded by Steve, that the minutes of the regular meeting of council held on April 6th, 2020 be adopted as circulated. Any questions on those minutes, errors or omissions? No. <clears throat> okay, all those in favor? That's carried, thank you. Uh, we don't have any business today arising from previous meetings, so we're on to items for consideration. So uh, in our normal plan, we'll go through and pull out those items that we'd like to have some further discussion on. So I will start off with a couple that I identified. So I identified 4B and 4C and 5C. Anybody have any others? <clears throat> I 
Did you say 5C already, Mayor? I did, yeah. yeah okay, thank you. So I, I chose 4B and C and 5C. And your worship, uh, item 3A needs some discussion and that is the Grants and Donations Community Development Program. Okay, thank you. That's what I was going to yeah. suggest. <laughs> okay, any others from members of council? Uh, your worship? Oh, yes. Sorry. Never mind. Sorry, go ahead. Okay. I'm good. <clears throat> oh, I'm good too. Okay. I'm good. Sure. Lisa, you didn't have any others? No, no. Okay, so I'll just recap that. So that's 3A, 4B, 4C, and 5C. Okay, so then we need a so, so motion worship, to... Uh, yes, yes. Worship, if I could ask, could we pull item 6A, which is a grant that the municipality received through uh, the New Horizons grant through the federal government? Sure. Thank you. Any others that staff wish some dis further discussion on or need direction on? Okay, so I'll just recap again. So we're gonna pull out for discussion 3A, 4B, 4C, 5C, and 6A. Okay, so need a motion to uh, Accept all of the other items listed there, and I'm going to suggest that's moved by Lisa, seconded by Dan. Um, so, so now we're dealing with just all the other items that haven't been identified. So I'll call the motion for them. All those in favor? That's carried. Thank you. So that brings us to 3A. This is the grant from Donations Community Development Program. Has everybody got the recommendation in front of them there? Or do I need to read this one out? No, I have it. I have it. Oh, I've got it here too, Andy. <clears throat> so, do, so do I. Okay. So I'm going to suggest that so Steve's going to move that one. Sherry's going to second it. And uh, did, did you want to speak to this one, Karen, in sp specific terms of what we need to deal with? Thanks uh, uh, through no, you, yeah, if you don't yeah. mind, maybe I'll just say a few words on it just to bring council up to date on it. Um, I think council's very familiar with this process in terms of the grants and donations, but with things changing very quickly, what you have in front of you has actually uh, changed a little bit since the report was prepared. So I just wanted to raise council's attention to that. So if you look at Schedule A, you will see a $2,500 donation being recommended to the Arthur Optimus Club for Canada Day celebrations. Um, that, have, that event has been canceled. And you'll also see where there's a $2,500 donation to the fireworks festival, and that event has also been canceled. What our recommendation to council is though, is to approve those donations. So approve those donations to the Optimus Club, to the Mount Forest Chamber, with the understanding that the funds would be used to go towards a town reopening event sometime later this year. Now, we don't have that event defined. We don't know when that event will happen but I've talked with um, the optimists, the chamber, and a number of other groups who are quite willing and wanting to partner on something when that time comes. So I'm, um, if council were to approve those, we obviously wouldn't advance those funds until those events happened. Um, but that would, that's the only recommendation in terms of Schedule A that has any differences. So. That would bring Schedule A to a total of 25,931.34. That's what's currently in your report. Um, in Schedule B, uh, the Mount Forest Lions Club have, um, they're going through the process of canceling their August event. 
So there's a fee waiver in there for $1,906. That'll get removed. Um, they're going to do their event sometime in 21, 2021. So that would come back to council in 2021. Um, and so that would make schedule B for a total of $4,758.85. Schedule C, we're recommending $4,000. So if you add that all up, it would come to $34,690.19. And we have a budget of $40,000. So if there was any other changes that council wanted to make, then we could accommodate that as well. Okay. Thank you, Dale. Um, Mike, did you want to speak? I just wanted to just speak as it relates to the fee waivers. Obviously, those are typically surrounding specific events, and some of them we don't know about at this point, but typically we don't address those until the event actually happens. It's a transaction that we deal with through our, through our AP and AR. So, I know that some of those events, people are wondering, well, maybe are they gonna happen? Or are they aren't gonna happen? We don't know those answers either, but we would suggest that we leave them as part of the schedule. If they happen, that's great. If they don't happen, those dollars will just sit in the account basically. So just wanted to clarify around the, the fee waivers for particular events. Okay, and we, we may have further cancellations and so on as the year progresses as well. But, uh, you know, to have those dollars sitting in that account unused is not a bad thing necessarily because we know we're going to have revenue reduction elsewhere. So, uh, open that up for any discussion. Oh, Mike, did you want to say something else? Just one more, just in, in line with Mayor Lennox's comment. When this is over, when we don't know when that will be. We anticipate, uh, staff does anyways, that people may come forward at that point. And given that this is a unique circumstance, we would probably look at doing another application process, another report to council, something along this, if and when we return to normal as it relates to the rental fee <coughs> standpoint anyways. Um, because yeah, we want to you know be able to support people, and we have dollars in the budget, so we would probably look to council to be open to another application process once we return to more of a normal state as it relates to our rentals. Hey, Steve, Dale, I just have one quick question. Have you heard about uh, or any word from the Get in Touch for Hutch Foundation? Like, are they canceling their um, event on June 20th. Have you heard about that yet or no? Yes, they are, uh, Councillor McCabe. So I spoke with uh, Myrna last week. Um, they, they're canceling the June event. They're hoping to run a September event. Okay. So, so that, is, uh, that is their major fundraiser this year. Um, and she's, she's hoping to run the event in September. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. Any other questions or comments? <clears throat> okay, so I think we have a mover and a seconder for that. So given those modifications, um, just one final round, does anybody have any other questions? Because we those modifications, we're just leaving it in the budget, pending future needs and so on, we'll deal with it at a future date. No, I'm good. Okay, so then I'll uh, call that motion. All those in favor? That's carried. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. That brings us to 4B. This is uh, report uh, 202005, being a report on relief of penalties and interest on property taxes. And I'm going to suggest that Dan's going to move that one and Lisa's going to second it so that we can have some discussion about it. Um, any staff want to comment on this one before we open it up for further discussion? Certainly, I can, I can speak to that one, uh, Mayor Lennox. Uh, basically, this report and recommendation come on the heels of a number of different dates. Uh, the first of which, uh, the COVID being declared a pandemic on March 12th. 
Uh, we then had the county and member municipalities declare emergencies on March 23rd. Uh, further to that, the county uh, and member municipalities uh, indicated relief measures on March 24th, and there was a notice to Wellington North residents um, with regards to that same relief consideration that was issued on March 27th. Uh, the remainder of the report, I think, reads in terms of what the re recommendation would be uh, from staff as it pertains to the waiver of interest uh, effective May and June, and that relief then would uh, provide opportunity for deferral uh, for the April 24th installment um, to a date prior to uh, July 1 uh, without any kind of repercussions from an interest standpoint. Okay, thanks Adam. I, I know that when we discussed this among the, the uh, mayors and the county warden, uh, we, the discussion was really about trying to provide some some short-term relief for people with suffering from you know loss of cash flow from loss of employment or whatever during this pandemic to try to give people some time to if they can access federal support programs to be able to carry on without uh, too much harm to their their financial pocketbook while still recognizing we need tax revenue to carry on the business of the municipality so uh, Anybody want questions or comments, discussion on that? Lisa? Yeah, I have a couple. Um, first one, I guess, just a question. Um, perhaps direct this towards Mike. Um, a lot of municipalities have uh, deferred this interest payment, um, and some really, really quickly. Um, are there others that didn't? Uh, revise their bylaw or how did that happen so quickly? <laughs> yeah, I, th I think in some cases, Councillor Hearn, um, maybe uh, some of the elected officials made uh, announcements around waiver of penalty and interest related to uh, tax payments without staff having the time to actually make adjustments within the bylaw itself. Um, I think everybody was in agreement about making short-term amendments to do that. And that's why we made the, as Adam said, the announcement on uh, March 27th that w this was gonna be under consideration and that we would proceed from a staff level to make sure it happened. Lots of other municipalities maybe use different wording in that, yes, we're waiving penalty and interest and then kind of backed into the actual bylaw or amendments to an existing bylaw to allow that to happen. We, yeah, took the position that we wanted to kind of, sure, give council an opportunity to give consideration and give staff an opportunity, Adam specifically, to work on a report that could be presented that was consistent in terms of what's happening across the county anyway. So that was kind of the direction that we took. Okay, thanks. And if I could just add a little bit to that, too, I think we wanted to recognize that members of the public don't necessarily understand the nuance of the fact that we have to amend a bylaw to make this happen. Uh, so we were trying not to muddy the water with that too much, even though this is what does have to happen in the background. I appreciate following the rules completely. <laughs> <laughs> but I have another question. Go ahead. <laughs> if that's okay. Um, I had some comments around the first announcement um, around the consideration of, of changing the bylaw, which goes back to the fact that we had to change the bylaw, right? Um, some residents were unclear whether this applied to everyone or just to some people. Um, I'm just wondering, since, since they have to be notified by the end of the week when their taxes are due, whether we could make that very clear that this this applies to everyone. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, I, th I think the intent is it does apply to everyone. Uh, I mean, we're hopeful that people who can pay their taxes on time will continue to do so because we do need the revenue to carry on our business. But it's a recognition that for those people that can't, you know, we're not going to penalize you if you can't make the payment on your on time. So. Yeah, I, I, I don't see any problem with us trying to be as clear as possible with that. I just want to make sure that the communication going forward 
Um, I'm, I'm sure there's an ad, an ad going in the paper or something like that is very, very clear that uh, we're not making decisions on a case by case basis. This applies to everyone. Okay. Is that fair? Yeah. I think that would be the intent anyways. Adam, would, if I'm correct. I'm not too certain about uh, the ad in the paper. That's certainly something we can do to this point. We've put the notice up on website and we can certainly share that on social. Um, we do have a list of property owners within the municipality that had inquired and we intend to reach out to all those individuals independently uh, to give the guides based on council's decision this evening. So we will be following up with specific individuals um, and then posting on website and social media. Okay, I'm gonna to go to Sherry and then Steve. So my question is um, with regards to the county. I note I noted in the report from Adam that um, our full payment is due, I believe, the end of June. Is there any consideration from the county uh, as we deal with residents that may not be able to pay to defer some of that payment to them? Okay. Yeah, Through yeah. you, Mayor Lennox, if I may. Uh, yeah, there please. has been consideration um, and much discussion at the county. There are some significant cash flow analyses being completed uh, by both by the county and all member municipalities. Uh, to this point, it has been discussion only. There has been no direction uh, or notification that there will be a deferral of, for the June 30th payment. Uh, so I would expect uh, that we will be proceeding under the notion that we are still required to make that quarterly installment. I, I would I would add to that as well, Sherry, that uh, we don't know how this is going to unfold exactly. For sure. And I, I think there will be some flexibility offered, perhaps, uh, depending on how this unfolds. But if our revenue largely continues to come in as expected, I think the county will be expecting to be paid in the normal orderly fashion. If, if it turns out differently than we project, then yeah, I think it needs to be a discussion for all of us because it it doesn't benefit the county to have its member municipalities having cash flow problems either. I so yeah, I, I guess that's sort of where I was 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 going with you know it's fine to ask for June's, but if this continues on, you know, for we don't know how long it's going to continue on. Um, it's detrimental for us to be cash strapped because then we're gonna be looking to them for other things. Right, and, and the, uh, the province has given us some relief in that they've, now they haven't, they've delayed the payments for the education side of things. So that is a benefit to help us manage our cash flow. But if this unfolds in a very negative way, then yeah, we're gonna to have to reevaluate how we deal with okay. our day-to-day -day operations. Okay, I just wondered if those discussions were happening. And it seems like that they are, so that's good. They absolutely are. And it is an issue that comes up fairly frequently among the, uh, the mayors and CAOs discussion that we're in our regular call. Okay, thank you. Steve? Actually, that was gonna be my question if uh, the county was gonna offer deferrals down to uh, the member uh, municipalities. So thanks for that, Sherry, and uh, your answer as well, so. Thank you. Any any other questions on this one? Okay. So I guess uh, not seeing any other hands. So we'll call the motion on that. All those in favor? Opposed? Oh, sorry, Sherry. I couldn't see your hand. Oh, sorry. Thought, I'll use this yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> it was just the light. That's all. So that's carried. Thank you, everybody. Sorry about that. It's okay. Um, next, that brings us to uh, 4C. This is uh, regard to relief from penalties and interest on water and sewer billings. Very similar story. I'm going to suggest that that one's uh, moved by uh, Lisa, seconded by Dan, and we'll open that up for discussion. Uh, did you have anything you wanted to add to this, Adam? 
Uh, no, Mayor Lennox, at this time, I don't believe so. I think you've nailed it. This is very much on the heels of the, the previous report just discussed and uh, is also in a follow along with the, the notion and the uh, notification from the county that these would be waived in the same consideration as that of property taxes. Okay. Thank you. And I would just add to that too, I mean, uh, municipalities across the county are very different in the way that they deal with water and sewer buildings as well. Uh, Center Wellington is the only other municipality that deals with this through their uh, uh, local electricity distributor. Everybody else does it directly from their uh, regular uh, township staff. So it's, it, it, it changes a little bit in terms of the mechanics of delivering this. So, and so, yeah, that's kind of what's been going on working with Wellington North Power because they are the ones that do the collection for us on that. So. Any questions or comments on that one? <clears throat> okay, I'm not seeing any. So all those in favor? That's carried, thank you. And that brings us to 5C. This is the Township's 2020 Wastewater Reserve Capacity. And I'm gonna suggest that's moved by Steve, seconded by Sherry. Um, and we'll open that up for discussion. Anybody have any questions or comments on that one? Just a, just a quick one, uh, Mayor. Thank you. The uh, the ten in Arthur and the twenty in Mount Forest is that is that already spoken for in a way so that the other lots or allotments that we have available for uh, for residents and for development. Like is that already taken out of the equation already before we open it up? Uh, through you, Mayor Lennox, the intent of those uh, units would be for in infill lots is sort of how they how they've been written. So the the twenty is consistent with the policy for Mount Forest, and the ten is just in recognizing that there was fourteen uncommitted um, reserves as part of the 2019 calculations. Okay, all right, thank you. So I think in answer to your question a little bit, Steve, those would be available to people who are doing infill lots to if once they get the green light from the province to apply for a building permit for a residential dwelling that we could issue them to people as they, as they request them. Okay, good. This is on top of already existing committed development. Right, okay, good. That's kind of what I wanted to clear up. Thank you. Okay, any other questions or comments on this one? Thanks, Matt. And I just, I just wanted to kind of reflect on how we got here a little bit, just particularly in the Arthur scenario, where we've had a number of years where we haven't been able to issue any permits or offer any opportunity for development. And now we're at a position where we can, uh, even before we have the, the expansion of the current sewage treatment plant uh, completed, this is a result of the efforts over the last number of years around inflow and infiltration. And while it, it seems like it's slow to get here compared to the time that we invest in it, it does, it does result in, all those efforts do result in something that's positive in that, uh, Without capital expenditure, we're now in a position to be able to offer some development opportunity. So uh, it seems like we spend a lot of money on those inflow and infiltration activities, but they do have a payoff down the road. It just doesn't seem immediate, especially given that it's a three-year rolling average. So I, I, the thing, I guess the message I'm trying to say is I think we need to keep up the effort on that and around other things that can help us get capacity without you know, necessarily having to spend the millions of dollars on the capital works. So, and I think it's a good, a good news story. I think we should be proud of the results that we've achieved over the last number of years. I mean, Any yeah, other? Andy, and uh, I think if we can keep that up and make sure that our residents know that they can keep it up to and keep the, like you say, the capacity and, uh, I guess their usage in mind as well. Conservation of water and resources is uh, is huge is and is key. 
and absolutely, as we look down the road to, you know, perhaps needing more capacity in Mount Forest, the, this type of thing and other conservation measures may be the, the most economical way to get us to the result that we want. So I think it's, uh, well, it's not an obvious thing. It's, it's, it's one of the ways we can get there. Any other questions or comments? Okay, I'll call the motion then. All those in favor? That's carried, thank you. And that brings us to uh, 6A. This is a report on the New Horizons grant, Seniors Helping Seniors. And I'm going to suggest that that one's moved by uh, Sherry, seconded by Steve. And Karen, did you have something specific you wanted to highlight with this? I just wanted to highlight that uh, the grant money that we applied for last June, uh, we were successful, announced it in February. We had a project in mind. And then uh, when COVID-19 burst upon the scene, the federal government has advised us that we can change that, whatever we're gonna use it for to provide immediate and essential assistance to seniors. So we reached out to the nursing homes and the hospital and what they were really, really short of were ways uh, to, to have people do distance um, uh, visits just like on Zoom. And so we took that money uh, and purchased five iPads uh, and cases for each of the facilities listed on the report. Uh, Strathcona, Birmingham, Crescent Care Arthur, Crescent Care, Harrison and Palmerston, Mapleton and Minto had uh, in the beginning were going to were going to be involved in the project. So that's what they had identified. We reached out to the hospital, um, but the uh, they were having um, the hundred women who care were doing donations of iPads for them, and then we're also contributing twenty five hundred dollars each to the food bank, one in Mount Forest and one in Arthur. And again, this was federal, a federal grant program, New Horizons, Seniors Helping Seniors. So they were pretty quick to get off the ground to, to re-allocate um, or have people reallocate that money. So uh, it was just kind of a good news story. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Um. And, and so so we're able to deliver that relatively quickly to them, Karen? Yeah, so Chanda and Mandy and Dale were also involved, heavily involved in that project. And uh, I believe, please correct me, somebody, if I'm wrong, but I think they've already been delivered, but I'm not sure. Okay, that's nice good work. news. That is really good news. Mm -hmm. It is. Any other questions, comment, or any questions or comments on this one? Okay. All, all those in favor then? That's carried. Thank you. And thank you to staff for being nimble and getting this arranged for me to community need and getting the feds to uh, agree to let us use the money for something that can benefit our community today, <clears throat> especially under these uh, unusual circumstances. Who says government can't be nimble, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Municipalities, of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think we can take quite all the credit off of that one. <laughs> okay, I think that brings us to the end of our items for consideration. Um, any notice of motion? this afternoon, or this evening, sorry. Okay. Oh. Not seeing any of those, that brings us to our community group meeting program report. And before we move to that, um, I just wanted to, uh, because community groups and volunteers are so important to our community, just uh, a shout out that this is uh, Volunteers Week. It's, it's an opportunity to recognize all of those contributions that uh, people make without uh, compensation for the benefit of our community so I hope uh, you all get a chance to thank those volunteers and uh, for doing what they do and uh, certainly 
we're eternally grateful for what they do in our community. With that said, uh, anybody have anything to report on the community group meeting program? I mean, meeting for community groups is a bit more challenging these days, but uh, yeah. Lisa. I have a ton of them, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. And you're going to have to bear with me but because they're both chambers and the Arthur BIA. There's there's a bit of overlap here because given the COVID situation, there's a bit of working together as well. Okay. Um, so I'll start with an update of the Mount Forest Chamber. We had a meeting by Google Hangouts last week, which was interesting. I caught most of the meeting until my Explore Net kicked out. Um, there will be no gala this year, of course, due to the COVID-19 situation and you've heard about no fireworks festival. Um, there still is no administrator at uh, the Mount Forest Chamber. They're holding off on that likely till June. The timing clearly just isn't, isn't right for that right now. Uh, the Wellington North Guide is progressing well, um, but something that they're working on, and some of this is kind of in, a little bit in collaboration um, with Arthur Chamber as well. And Callie Rice of Mark Apparel is kind of spearheading this through the Mount Forest Chamber and taking it on. It's a Shop Wellington North. And it's kind of a, a take on shop, like Shopify. So what there will be is um, they will have chamber members that have products to sell. In the beginning, it'll be just a few products and maybe some gift cards or something like that. And you can go online, pay with your credit card, your debit, order them, have them delivered. So it's, it's a service to the chamber members to help them through this, this time. And I'm told, I believe that Arthur will have a spot on that as well. And Arthur's just thinking about gift certificates at this point in time, um, because the two chambers are different. Um, so that they're looking to launch that pretty quickly like within the next couple weeks they're getting some um there's some breaks on the fees and etc right now for non-private type groups and some of the stuff that's going on so it's actually pretty exciting and i hope that all of council will support it once it gets going and it will help um, the businesses here in wellington north so i think that that's good news um, the Arthur Chamber, uh, they're, they're working on their logo right now, redesigning that. And the reason that was started was because they're also redesigning their website um, through the Digital Main Street program. Uh, their downtown Easter egg hunt was clearly cancelled and they're still um, talking about putting up that billboard with kind of a link to an online Wellington North guide or online Arthur guide. And they did kind of talk about a block party, but we, you know, as an end to, to COVID-19 and the, the isolation and, and, and everything that's gone on. Um, but we discussed that in, in our grants and donations too. It's been discussed in through multiple groups right now. Um, <clears throat> their flower baskets are on, on schedule to be delivered. And like I said, they are, probably taking part in the Mount Forest, uh, in the Wellington North, uh, shop Wellington North portal. Um, the Arthur BAA, they elected their chair uh, at our meeting last week. So Keith Harris of the Arthur Karate Dojo, um, mm. and he also runs Tro Troll Ridge Creek, uh, Kiki Maple Water based out of Arthur, he is the chair. And uh, we had a really nice discussion last week. They presented various project ideas. There was a consensus though, given what's been going on and the difficulties that businesses are having right now that there shouldn't be a 2020 levy. And I think we can kind of all understand that. Um, but they did say that they wish to be shovel ready with projects should money uh, present itself. There's a number of grants that we see flowing right now, there could be more to help businesses. So they wanna be prepared for that. Um, some ideas that they threw out was uh, downtown Wi-Fi, and that's pretty timely um, given the Whiteman rollout. Um, they want to, they're talking about focusing on health from the inside out, uh, as this is you know, difficult on business owners. Um, so they were thinking of um, some other things like an outdoor gym, 
Um, they were talked about their uh, BIA website. And something else that came up, and I, I believe this is going forward, and this was also talked about at the Mar Arthur Chamber, was um, Paint the Town Rainbow um, with Eileen from the Arthur School of Art painting kind of a continuous rainbow all over town to kind of signify hope and, and all sorts of other good things. Um, so I believe that that's going forward. She's donating her time and there, were, there was paint that was donated, I believe. Um, uh, and uh, Paula, Paula Coffey will be helping with some of the painting. And that sounds pretty exciting. Um, they did also have some concerns um, I think there might be a letter coming from them. I'm not positive that uh, about the state of the Queen's Hotel. So it was a great, great meeting. It was a good productive meeting and we have our next meeting on May the 20th. Um, that's it for those. And the only other thing that I would want to maybe update everyone on is the BMX skate park. Of course, we haven't had a meeting, but we did manage to get a grant application into Farm Credit Canada Agri-Spirit Fund right at the end of March. We were kind of hoping that everyone else's minds were in a different place, but our minds were focused on getting that grant application done. So that's my report. <laughs> okay, thanks, Lisa. Anybody have any questions for Lisa on any of that? I just, uh, I just wanted to maybe ask either Lisa or maybe, maybe Sherry might know. Who uh who looked after the blue ribbons that are tied on the, the light post downtown in Mount Forest? Anybody know? I don't actually know, but it's it's only the one it oh it seems to be only the one block. Just the one block, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure who did that. Yeah, okay. No, it just it's a nice touch, looks good. Dale, Dale might know. Yeah, Councillor I, I think it's the uh, downtown Mount Forest group but I'm not 100% positive on that. Okay, yeah, no problem. Just a nice nice touch to kind of show some concern. Sure. Anybody else, else have anything for the community group program report this month? This, this month, yeah. Sherry, go ahead, please. Um, it's not actually one of my committees, but um, I just wanted to put, uh, shout out to uh, the Wellington North Fire Services and the EMS that uh, judged and paraded through town on Saturday uh, to look at all the sidewalk uh, chop drawings. Um, it was nice to see. If you haven't had an opportunity to see some of the chop drawings in person, there are a bunch on what's happening Mount Forest. Um, it was nice to be out. We toured around um, and it really made you sort of feel alive, even though you uh, distancing from everyone and it was nice to see people sort of out and about, but still practicing social distancing. Yeah, thanks, Sherry. I would agree with you on that too, as uh, I was out and saw a few and it was, I was particularly enjoyed seeing the kids proudly showing off mm -hmm. their handiwork. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, any other uh, community group program report or comments anyone wants to make? I don't have any. <clears throat> Seeing none, and I guess we're on to, okay, thanks Steve. We're on to uh, bylaws here. So the, uh, this, is, this is the one to deal with the uh, uh, interest and penalty on uh, property taxes. So the recommendation is that bylaw number 37-20 being a bylaw to amend bylaw 002-20 being a bylaw to provide for an interim tax levy uh, on all assessment within specific tax classes and to provide a penalty and interest rate for current taxes in default and tax arrears to be read a first, second, and third time and enacted. And I'm going to suggest that uh, Steve is going to move that and Sherry's going to second it. And uh, again, this is to deal with that uh, tax arrears. Any questions or comments on that bylaw? Okay. All those in favor? That's carried. Thank you. 
And I think that uh, brings us to our closed meeting session. So I'm going to say the closed meeting is, so this motion recommendation to move into a closed meeting moved by Dan, seconded by Lisa. And so I'll read the recommendation that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Wellington North uh, go into a meeting at uh, 7.45 p.m. that's close to the public under subsection 239.2 of the Municipal Act 2001, specifically dealing with personal matters about an identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees. And that's to deal with report CAO 2020-002 regarding COVID-19 and to review of the closed session minutes from March 9th, 2020 and uh, to rise and report from the closed meeting session. So uh, just before uh, we do go into our closed, I just want to let everybody on the call know that uh, we will be uh, exiting the Zoom platform to go into the closed session and council will be uh, um, uh, going into recess and you, we'll be using a different format, uh, just a teleconference to deal with our closed session this evening. Anything that comes out of that closed session, we will report in the uh, minutes that will be posted on our website if you have any questions or concerns. Um, and uh, so just uh, based on that motion and uh, to go into closed, I'll call that motion, all those in favor. That's carried, thank you. Uh, do we want to uh, officially recess here, Karen, from process perspective? Yes, and, and do we want to set a time to have people call in? Maybe people need a refreshment break. It's 7.45, so will we call in by 7.55? 7.55. Is that okay with everybody? Yes. Yep, 7.55 is fine with me. Yep. We'll reconvene by teleconference at 7.55. Okay, so I need a mover and a seconder to a recess. So I'm going to suggest that uh, uh, Lisa and Dan will be the movers and seconders for that recess till 7:55. All those in favor? That's carried. Thank you. We'll talk to you in a few minutes. Everyone on the gallery, thanks for joining us. Thanks. Bye, Bye. for now. Bye. -bye.